Welcome to the Joe Rogan Experience, folks. Today I have a very special guest joining me, Marcus. Now, for those of you who don't know, Marcus is the mayor of Jacobstown, a town in the Mojave wasteland. But here's the kicker. Marcus is also a super mutant. Yeah, you heard that right. A super mutant. Marcus, it's an absolute pleasure to have you on the show. So, Marcus, can you tell us a bit about your backstory? How did you become a super mutant? It's an absolute pleasure to be on the show, Joe. Well, I used to be part of a vault, Vault 17, the same one that Lily Bowen, a nightkin, happens to be from. I was exposed to FEV, the forced evolutionary virus, and that's what turned me into a super mutant. Wow, that's intense. And what was it like being a super mutant? Yeah, it wasn't easy. A lot of humans were scared of us mutants, and rightfully so. I served with the Master for a long time. I eventually found my way to the town of Broken Hills, where I made a new life for myself. And I know you've had some experience with the Master. What was it like dealing with him? Yeah, the Master was a real piece of work. He was trying to create a new race of super mutants in an attempt to elevate humans to a new level. I respect the Master to this day with what he's done. That's wild. It sounds like you've had quite the journey. One thing that's always intrigued me about the super mutants is their ideology. I mean, you were created by a group that had some pretty extreme views. Did you ever agree with the Master and his vision for the future? At one point, I did believe in what the Master was preaching. I thought that creating a new race of super mutants could be the key to a better future for everyone. Over time, I've actually also come to respect the vault dweller who took him down. That's understandable. I can imagine it must have been tough to come to terms with those conflicting beliefs. So after the Master and his army were defeated, what did you do next? Well, I stuck around in the wasteland for a while longer, trying to help out where I could. I eventually ended up settling in the town of Jacobstown, which was founded by a group of super mutants like myself. It's a place where mutants and humans can live together peacefully, and I'm proud to be the mayor of that town. That's really cool, Marcus. It's amazing how you've been able to make a positive impact on the wasteland, despite all the challenges you've faced as a super mutant. Can you tell us a bit more about Jacobstown? What's life like there? Sure, Joe. Jacobstown is a small town nestled in the mountains of the Mojave wasteland. We've got a mix of humans, super mutants, and other creatures living there, and we all get along pretty well. We've got a doctor who's working on finding a cure for the nightkin illness, and we're always looking for ways to improve our community. That's really impressive, Marcus. It sounds like you've built something truly special. And I have to say, it's great to see mutants and even some humans living together in harmony. We could all learn a thing or two from you guys. You mentioned earlier that you had some experience with the Vault Dweller. What was your relationship like with him, and how did he ultimately defeat the Master? Yeah, the Vault Dweller was an incredible person. Over time, I developed a respect for him as he fought against the Master and his army of mutants. As for how he defeated the Master, it was actually a pretty ingenious plan. He found the Master himself in the cathedral, and he destroyed it. Without the cathedral, and without Mariposa, which the Dweller later destroyed, the super mutants lost their sense of purpose and scattered. That's really interesting. It sounds like the Vault Dweller was a true hero, and what did he do after defeating the Master? I heard he went on to found a tribe in a place called Arroyo. Yeah, that's right. After defeating the Master, the Vault Dweller decided to travel northward and explore the rest of the wasteland. Eventually, he found a place called Arroyo, where he settled down and founded a tribe. He helped the people of Arroyo rebuild their community and taught them how to survive in the wasteland. It's a great example of how one person can make a difference. Absolutely. It's amazing to see how much impact one person can have on the world, especially in a place like the Wasteland where life is so difficult. It sounds like you and the Vault Dweller have a lot in common in terms of your desire to make a positive impact on the world. As speaking of Arroyo, I think our viewers are itching to know more about the Chosen One. Can you tell us a bit about how he came to be and what his role was in the Wasteland? Sure thing, Joe. The Chosen One was actually the grandchild of the Vault Dweller and he was born and raised in Arroyo. When the Vault Dweller passed away, the tribe entered a decline, and the Chosen One was tasked with finding a Garden of Eden Creation Kit, or GEC, which was supposed to contain the tools needed to rebuild the wasteland. Wow, that's pretty intense. So why did the Chosen One have to leave Arroyo to find the GEC, and how did you end up meeting him? 
The Chosen One had to leave Arroyo because the tribe was facing a drought, and they needed the Jek to create a sustainable source of water. As for how I met him, well, let's just say we crossed paths while he was on his quest. We had some common problems, so we teamed up to take them down together. That's really cool, Marcus. It's amazing how interconnected all these stories are. And it's fascinating to see how the actions of one person can have such a big impact on the world. You say that you crossed paths. How did you help the vault dweller, and what did he go on to do? Well, it seemed like he had a problem, and I had a problem. We were both trying to take down our problems. So we teamed up after he took care of my problem, and I helped him with his problem. Specifically, with what the Chosen One went on to accomplish, well, let's just say he saved the world. Wow, that's quite the accomplishment. How exactly did he save the world? The Enclave had this plan to release a virus called the FEV, which would have killed all non-mutated humans in the wasteland. The Chosen One was able to infiltrate their base and stop them from carrying out their plan. He also managed to destroy their oil rig, which was their main base of operations. Although I'm convinced that there were remnants somewhere, and they escaped so they're probably still alive. Yeah, that's what Nobark Noonan thinks. And so now you are here, in Jacobstown. It's amazing to see how all these stories are interconnected and how the actions of one person can have such a big impact on the world. Thanks for sharing your experiences with us today, Marcus. It's been a real pleasure. Thanks for having me, Joe. All right, folks, it's time for another quick break, and this time I want to talk to you about a company that's been a mainstay in the Mojave Wasteland for years. I'm talking about the Crimson Caravan, the premier trading company in the region. Now, you might be thinking, Joe, why are you talking about a caravan company? What's so special about that? Well, let me tell you, folks. The Crimson Caravan is more than just a group of traders. They're a network of skilled merchants who are dedicated to bringing goods and supplies to every corner of the Mojave. Whether you're a traveler in need of supplies, a settlement in need of provisions or a business owner looking to expand your inventory, the Crimson Caravan has you covered. They've got a huge selection of weapons, armor, food, and other essentials, all at competitive prices. And the best part is they're always looking for new business partners. So if you're a local vendor or a business owner looking to expand your market, the Crimson Caravan is the perfect partner for you. They'll help you get your goods to new customers, and they'll even offer you special discounts on their own products. So whether you're a customer or a business owner, the Crimson Caravan is the company you want to do business with in the Mojave Wasteland. Check out your local headquarters or stop by one of their trading posts today and tell them Joe Rogan sent you. Hail the People's Republic. 